welcome to the album, man. And as, of course, earlier, well, last week, in fact, Louise died, I decided that instead of a random Friday review this week, I would cover one of Lou Reed's classic albums. And I chose Lou Reed's Transformer, which probably his biggest selling album. And while in general I'm not a huge fan of his music, I do like this album and it certainly helps for me that it was produced by David Bowie and Mick Ronson. And yeah, they really helped this album and their contribution is very noticeable. So this album of course was released in 1972 and is probably most famous for spawning the hits Walk on the Wild Side and Perfect Day. Okay. So let's get into the review of this album then. So the first thing I have to say about this album is it's more about Lou Reed himself, to be honest. And that is, I don't hugely like his voice. I'm sorry, but it just, it just doesn't quite do it for me. Look, I mean, at times his voice can be good, like in Perfect Day, for example. But are you really going to tell me? That Goodnight Ladies is a classic vocal performance. I mean, okay, yeah, there'll probably be some of you will say it will and that I'm being harsh, but his voice, it, it's a bit of Marmite. I, I think that's hard to deny. It is a Marmite voice. You love it or hate it. And, yeah, I'm, I'm not keen. But, as I said, um, you know, sometimes it is good. And also, I'm not sure this as an album as a whole really suits his voice. I mean, in this album, Lou clearly tries to capitalise on the popularity of glam rock and the androgynous stylings of his producer, Mr. Bowie. And he certainly tries to go for more of a marketable sound than what you might get in The Velvet Underground. Well, certainly, I only really know The Velvet Underground, Nico, their debut album. And while I personally prefer the sound of Transformer, I get the feeling... Almost it's a little forced. I don't know. I just, I mean, I don't know much about Reed, so, you know, if I sound ignorant at times, you know, please don't don't kill me. But uh, this at times certainly feels a bit like a Bowie album featuring Lou Reed, if you get what I mean, even though Lou Reed uh, did actually write all of the music. Anyway, let's talk about the parts of the album I did like. So, of course, we obviously have to talk about the holy trinity of the album, the three most famous songs, which of course are Walk on the Wild Side, Perfect Day, and Satellite of Love. So I'll start by talking about Perfect Day, which is my favourite Lou Reed song. I think his vocals really work on this song. I mean, they do. And they help add to what is, quite truly, one of the most beautiful songs out there. Um, yeah, I mean, though I also think that Mick Ronson's contribution doesn't quite get the credit it deserves because he was the one who arranged and decided to have the orchestration and strings in the background which really lift the song up and give it that almost heavenly quality, to be quite honest. Okay, Walk on the Wild Side, though, is, well, probably Louis' most famous song and somehow, I don't know how, received a radio airplay considering it talks about well, transsexuality, drugs, male prostitution, and oral sex, which are themes you usually got on the radio in 1972. Um, though I think in the US an edited version was to cut out the reference to oral sex, but still the other ones were left in, so there you go. But that's because it's very poetic in late nature, and the references are subtle. Too subtle for the senses, but if you know what you're looking at, you know, you're looking for, oh, you, you can definitely hear it. Very, very cleverly done, I have to say. I've always thought as a lyricist, a very interesting person. And yeah, I love the fact that this song is driven by that classic twin interlocking bass line from Herbie Flowers, who also played bass on a number of Bowie's albums, including Diamond Dogs and a Space Oddity, and probably some others I just can't remember on the top of my head. Though, of course, Diamond Dogs was after this album, I mean... Anyway, the reason he played two bass lines on this song is actually pretty interesting. You might think, oh, you know, Lou Reed thought it might sound cool. No, it, it's actually more that Herbie would get paid double for playing two instruments on the same song as opposed to playing one, which, uh, that's pretty funny, actually. Anyway, this song, it doesn't have a guitar with a traditional arrangement to it. It's quite sparse, in, you know, um... I don't know, the way it's like pans and the instrumentation, and that really helps to emphasise Reed's great lyrics on this track, and of course, I mean, the ending saxophone solo. Wow, that is, that is just killer. What, definitely up there with my favourite um, saxophone solos, definitely. 
Satellite of Love. Now, this is a fair classic from the album. I don't believe it was released as a single, though it has become a bit of a fan favourite. And the piano feels so Bowie-like, and to be honest, the whole space vibe can't help but remind you of Space Oddity and Starman, that type of thing. And both of those songs, I'm pretty sure Starman preceded this. I, I don't know whether Ziggy was before or after this, but I know Ziggy was 72. And, yeah, I mean, this especially reminds you of Bowie when, well, you hear the high-pitched vocals of Bowie himself in the background, which certainly adds to the atmosphere. The, the only bit I don't like is the change in that John, um, Harry John verse. If you know the song, you know what I mean. Uh, that just feels a little out of place. Otherwise, it, it's, it's a pretty great song. And, yeah, there's definitely other good songs on him, stuff like Hanging Around, such as a very glam vibe to it, and Rag and Wheel, which... In fact, it's actually rumoured to have been written by Bow, even though, of course, it's credited to Lou Reed. And uh, there's definitely some dodgy and downright bad songs, I hesitate to say, on this album as well. The worst, I think it has to be, and you may guess what I'm going to say. Have a guess? Okay. New York Telephone Conversation. Yeah, after listening to this, I was just like, what the hell have I just been listening to? I mean, seriously, what on F is this? I think this song is, uh, to be blunt, it's one and a half minutes of vocal rancory and ridiculous duetting falsetto. I personally don't at all, yeah, I, I just, uh, no. Uh, and I don't like the finale to the album Goodnight Ladies, and yes, while the clear references to T.S. Eliot are always nice, and I think Wasteland he references to the Goodnight Ladies, I'm pretty sure that poem ends with the lines, um, this song is just artsy, pretentious, anti-melodic nonsense. <laughs> I don't like it. It was some hugely annoying instrumentation. I'm sorry, but the baritone sax and tuba, I like a good sax, but no. It seems to, like, clash with the vocals. Oh, I, yeah, no. <laughs> and I also dislike makeup and its stupid plodding tuba and the artsy ex-Velvet Revolvers... Velvet Revolver? Yes, Scott Whelan's, obviously. Velvet Underground song, Andy's Chest. Uh... Yeah, really overall, I think this album, while it has some really good songs, it's not one of the great albums, in my opinion. I can understand its place in music's history, but it's not something that would make my personal top 100 list. And I really think the reason I like this album is really just due to Bowie's production slash input and Mick Ronson's mind-blowing lead work, which I failed to mention before, but especially in songs like uh, Vicious, the opener. Oh my god, his lead work. It's amazing. It really is so great throughout this album. I, I like an awful lot. But really, I think Lou Reed can end up becoming... Uh, without, you know, Bowie and Ronson's, and certainly on some of these songs, he can end up becoming a bit too artsy and pretentious, and almost a musical equivalent of his friend Andy Warhol, which in my opinion isn't a particularly great thing. Still, this album has a nice glam vibe to it, some very poetic, clever, intelligent lyrics, and some surprisingly catchy melodies, so I'm going to give this album a 7.5 out of 10. It's certainly... Uh, it's only rated as a classic, and it's an album that everyone should listen to, without a doubt, and make their own mind up. But that's my opinion. Some people wanted to know, wanted me to review a Louis Dam, so there it is. And this has been the album, man. Thanks for watching. Comment, subscribe, of course. Rest in peace, Louis Reed. And this has been the album, man. And, you know, long live rock and roll.